Hey everyone, I just wanted to inform everyone about our science and technology session that we will be starting today at 6 p.m. and continue for another 20 days which will definitely help you in your preparation for your civil services examination or any other state public service examination. Now generally what we would do is that we kind of ignore science and technology when it comes to your prelims or mains but if you look at the number of questions that we get every year from science and technology on an average it's around 10 questions meaning around 20 marks which you definitely should not ignore when it comes to your prelims at the same time once again when it comes to your mains Every year you do have certain number of questions which are asked from science and technology which once again tells you not to ignore science and technology with respect to your civil services examination. On top of that, if you actually go through the type of questions from previous year's papers, you would actually realize that these are not your basic science questions from your NCRT textbooks. No longer do you get questions such as who discovered penicillin, who discovered your proton or what are the laws of thermodynamics, absolutely not. No longer do you get such simple and easy questions. The kind of questions that you get for science and technology with respect to your civil services examination is always application based. So in order for you to understand, in order for you to answer such questions, understand such questions, you should have some basic understanding of the various concepts of science and technologies with respect to recent development. So what we will be doing is that the focus, the focus is generally on universalizing. The focus is generally on universalizing scientific and technological literacy. The focus will be on universalizing scientific and technological literacy. This is nothing but the ability to apply scientific and technological concepts in everyday work and culture of one's own society. So what I'm trying to say is that when it comes to preparation for your civil services examination with respect to your science and technology, importance is on how can science and technology solve problems for humanity? How can we solve problems of humanity? What is the expansion of science and technology into other areas? And also the development of scientific concepts in new and emerging areas. Hence, what I am trying to say is that when it comes for science and technology, current affairs, Current affairs is very, very important. Current affairs is very, very important. So, if you decide to join me today at 6 p.m., what we will be going to do is that we'll go through some basic concepts in various fields of science and technology, starting with some of the topics that I have mentioned in this particular slide over here. For example, we can go through, we will be going through the institutional structure for scientific development in India, meaning what are the various ministries, what are the various departments, what are the programs that we have in India, what are the schemes that we have in India, what are the policies that we have in India, what are the different organizations or bodies that we have in India who are working, who are responsible for the development of scientific, uh, who are responsible for the development of science and technology in India. If you take nanotechnology for example, we have this nano mission, we have nano, uh, we have an initiative for nanotechnology in India taken up by the Ministry of Science and Technology. So what are these missions? What are these initiatives which are taken up by the government? If you come to information technology or if you come to electronics, you have new concepts like for example, you have 5G technology which is going to come up. Then what is this 5G? How does 5G differ from 4G, 3G, 2G or 1G? How is 5G going to transform information technology? How is 5G going to transform communication in India? What are its repercussions? What are its advantages? What will India have to do? Is India doing something? How is India going to play a part in this global development of information technology? All these minute things we can actually look into. Take space for example. We will go through the different launch vehicle technologies. 
that we have in India? What are the recent developments that we have taken, uh, which have taken place in India? What are the recent projects that ISRO is developing? What are the recent kinds of uh, satellites that have been launched? What are the different kinds of orbits that we have into which satellites are put into orbit? All these things we will take care of. Now, for example, space for space force is. Uh, important. It is important for you to know such things. All these such things we will take care of when we go through space. Similarly, we have defense. Then we have this integrated guided missile development program. So what is this program? How is this pro How did this program come to be about? What are the different missiles that are being developed under this uh, program? If you take energy, you, you can have renewable sources of energy. What are the different sources of renewable sources in energy? How is India faring when it comes to comparing uh, with the rest of the world? What are the new sources of energy that we are trying to develop? Where are these new sources of uh, energy being developed? We will go through all these things. Take biotechnology, for example. Your recent example is with respect to your COVID. Now, with respect to this, I'm pretty sure many of you would have come across something known as polymerase chain reaction. Then what is this polymerase chain reaction? This polymerase chain reaction is something, it's a technology which is actually used to develop multiple uh, RNA strains of the virus or the genetic material of the virus is being replicated. How is this done? How is this useful? All these things with respect to genetic engineering we will be discussing in biotechnology. If you move over to nuclear technology for example, what is the three phase of nuclear development, nuclear energy development in India? These are the different kind of concepts, these are the different kind of topics that we that will be dealt in uh, that will be dealt under this 20 day program of science and technology which will definitely help you in your preparation for your civil services examination so before you start i want you to remember your civil services examination is very broad it is very very broad you cannot have in depth knowledge in each and every topic in each and every scientific or technological concept so the idea is to have surface level knowledge and that's exactly what we are going to do so what i want you to do is that i want you to join me today at 6 pm for this online session which will include tests which will include tests which will also include material for science and technology which has been updated with respect to your current affairs and I want you to join me in this journey to complete science and technology for your examination. So if you do have any more information in order to uh, on uh, on about how to attend today's class please check the description or you may also contact any of the two numbers which are given in this particular slide. So Thank you very much. I hope to see you today at 6 p.m.